Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at the Sackcloth and Ashes News Report. We have got a lot of stories, important stories to cover today. The U.S.'s culture is slowly changing. Every sector is getting hit. I mean, we have lost confidence in the aviation industry. That's in a downward spiral. And now we have the UPS uh, reportedly a possible strike around the corner. And if this happens, it could become the costliest work stoppage in U.S. history. So Vanguard and BlackRock, they are the top two shareholders of the UPS. Then you got Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They also own a significant interest in the company. Sounds a little fishy to me. But anyways, what they are reporting is around 340,000 UPS workers may go on strike at the end of the month unless an agreement on employee contracts can be quickly reached between the company and union members. Now, talks will resume next week after the two sides could not come to an agreement earlier this month. And UPS, they have agreed. Some of the things they've agreed to is to put air conditioning in the new vehicles, retrofit uh, the old ones with new fans, and they're also trying to come to an agreement on worker uh, pay. Now, I pray that they can reach an agreement Reports are saying that if the strike goes forward, that it could really hit the U.S. economy. That's all we need right now, costing $7.1 billion, making it the costliest work stoppage in U.S. history. Now, if you know someone who does delivery service for any of the big shipping and receiving companies, you'll quickly learn that it's very demanding work. A lot is put upon their shoulders every day when they're out there, and they're given very long routes. Some of them can have over 100 packages to deliver each day, and sometimes their trucks aren't comfortable. Their brakes can be shoddy. Of course, no air conditioning and the risk of dog bites. So I think it's great to improve the working conditions for these delivery employees. But uh, like I said before, this most likely has very little to do with the employees and everything to do with purposely slowing down the U.S. economy. So heads up to those who rely on goods and services that come through this supply chain giant. Uh, I actually think that's almost everyone. I want to list some of the names that are on the top 25 companies who use UPS delivery services. Amazon. I know a lot of people use Amazon, Apple, eBay, Walmart, Samsung, Best Buy, Costco, Lowe's, DoorDash, Walgreens, Office Depot. Do you use any of those businesses? I mean, these are just a few of the more common names on the list. And if this strike happens, it will definitely have a major impact on the U.S. economy. Now, if you look at the word strike itself, they're calling for a strike. This could be looked at as an attack on America, but made to look like something much less sinister. See, the definition of the word strike, it actually means to hit forcibly and deliberately with one's hand or other implement. And then there's another definition I want to bring your attention to, unwelcome phenomenon that occurs suddenly and having harmful or damaging effects. See, these globalists, uh, a lot of them are principalities and powers in high places, and there's so much wordplay out there in the spiritual realm. So you got to see how they use their words. Life and death are in the tongue. So, so just think of all the goods and services that could be halted, food and medical supplies especially. I've, I've really been thinking about those who need baby formula. So friends, make sure, oh, also get your seeds ordered because you definitely want to be able to grow your own food and get your stored water and your water containers. Now, this strike, it just might affect every person in the U.S. in one way or another if it happens. So, not trying to cause fear, but they did release this in the news. And ultimately, though, we need to place our trust in the Lord, not in things. But we are in a physical realm. We need these basic things. 
And if the Lord is prompting you to get particular items, then please don't put that off any longer. Now, this next story, it could also mean shortages for medical products and medicines. It could affect your hospitalization. If you're going in the hospital, a massive tornado in North Carolina severely damaged a Pfizer plant and several other structures. It shut down an interstate yesterday and injured more than a dozen people yesterday afternoon. And it was an EF3 tornado damage in some areas. Winds were up to 150 miles per hour as it tore through Nash County. And Nash County is 45 miles east, uh, northeast of Raleigh. A lot of damage to homes, trees toppling onto the interstate, I-95, and it was shut down. And as of this morning, Red Cross, they have centers open for people who are in need. Now, they're out there this morning. They're still assessing the damage. So prayers for those who have been affected. And according to Pfizer's website, the company's Rocky Mountain location is, now this is very important, it's one of the largest sterile injectable facilities in the world. So with around 25% of all sterile injectables used in the USA hospitals being produced at that site. Look at that facility, what it looks like today from aerial coverage. And the location here, it makes several products, including anesthesia, therapeutics, and anti-infectives. So could this impact one's hospital stay? You betcha. And could it potentiate an antibiotic storage? Yes. So we're still waiting on more information, uh, the full impact of the damage. But it's almost as if Mother Nature knew exactly which facility to wipe out to do the most damage to the American health care system. So prayers for those in North Carolina as well. Look at this next story for those in Kentucky who are enduring extreme flooding. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir he declared a state of emergency as historic amounts of rainfall spurred widespread flooding throughout the state yesterday. The town of Mayfield, which uh, he said has already been through too much, has had a significant rain and likely significant damage. So for all the communities that the governor said have, have been impacted, he signed a state of emergency yesterday, and he posted that video on his Twitter. So Western Kentucky has seen waves of thunderstorms. They're also moving their way over here towards the Tennessee Valley. We're expecting to get at least three days of heavy rain. Uh, there were, were also several water rescues, and it almost looks like a weather war is going on out there, and it made me think with this election not too far away, I wonder if they're going to try to redraw the voting districts. Yes, because, you know, when these weather events happen, people are relocated, so they may have to, you know, if populations are relocating, they may want to redraw these election districts for the next presidential election because of all that weather destruction going on out there. See, there is a bigger picture to these uh, events. So that's an interesting thought. And Kentucky, a very big pro-gun state as well. And they love their independence on many different levels. Well, let's shift over to uh, global news. This is from Reuters. It is the third night of Russian attacks on Ukrainian ports there at the Black Sea, which according to the EU foreign policy chief, uh, Joseph Borrell, it will precipitate a huge global food crisis. Of course, this is not surprising, is it? There have been civilian casualties, he's reporting, and big destruction of grain storage there. Now, if the sea route there is closed, he says, then the neighbors of Ukraine will have to roll up their sleeves and assist more to get the grain out to the rest of the world. They will have to open up their borders more, the neighbors, to help 
facilitate the transport of the grain. So I think this is a Bible prophecy alert headline, Revelation chapter 6, that is the breaking of the third seal, scarcity of food. People who have not taken these messages serious enough to begin working with others to grow food, please take heed. Please, you've got to start somewhere. And if you've never grown food before, you need to start practicing now. We live in an apartment. We've got food growing in the front and in the back. We even have planter boxes around our uh, guardrails in the back. On our deck, we're growing all kinds of stuff. And it does supplement our grocery shopping. So, I mean, if we can do it, you can do it. It just takes some Holy Spirit motivation so please don't delay, friends. Now, no matter what you're going through today, you know, we do want to encourage you. Don't be afraid. God is on the throne. He's watching over his own. He walks beside each of his sheep. And that's why I appreciate the 23rd Psalm so much. I love it. I've committed it to memory. Um, you know, after you've said it a few thousand times, it'll just roll right off of your heart when you need to bring it forward to give you encouragement. The Lord is our shepherd and he should be revered as such. He should be honored as such. He tells us to fear no evil. He says he will comfort us with his rod and his staff. So there will be some discipline involved with that. And the best part is the ending, surely goodness and mercy. It will follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love the promises of the Lord. So the Lord is with you today, friends, and he wants to comfort you through the trials of this life, and he wants us to learn to be overcomers as well. And if you feel knocked down, you've been dragged around by the enemy, get back up on your horse today and keep riding, keep following the Lord, be encouraged in the Lord, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Keep on that full armor of the Lord every day. Don't take it off for a single moment. All right. Well, friends, that's it for today. Hope to be back tomorrow. We love you all. We bless you. Have a good and a very godly day and stay in your prayer closets. All right. Talk to you again real soon.